Welcome to the Story King Podcast, where great stories are read, discussed, and given their due honor. I'm your host, John Carlo, and back by popular demand, we're doing another writing prompt episode with my three sons. So we'll start with my middle son today. Last time he had a prompt about a guy in London getting grabbed and pulled into an alley, and I wrote about an alien called the Zipzoing who fell in love with who he thought was a human. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell me your new prompt for today? Hi, I'm Michael, and I am in fourth grade. My writing prompt is, A guy named Prometheus is walking in Greece when the street that he's walking on opens up and he falls into the realm of Hades. So a guy named Prometheus is walking down the street. The street opens up, and uh, Hades is revealed. Is that right? And he falls into the realm of Hades. He falls into the realm of Hades. Now, is this the same Prometheus from mythology, or this is just a guy named Prometheus? This is just a guy named Prometheus. So this is like modern day stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so I will take 10 minutes to write that story. Now my youngest son, who did not care for the direction I took with his story last time, he wanted me to write a story about the French and English getting into a war, and I sort of turned it into a silly one that takes place in the future, where wars are fought by country representatives going into an arena and trying to outslap the other. So why don't you introduce yourself again and tell me your new prompt, and I'll see if I could do a better job today. Hi, my name is Christopher, and I'm in kindergarten, and my writing prompt is about something that takes place in Greece, and and the guy has to go and fight a hydra. All right, so your prompt is about a guy in Greece who has to fight the hydra monster, which, if people are not familiar, that is a mythological monster. Last up is my oldest son. His prompt last time was about a guy who goes into a store and it blows up. So I wrote a story about these store owners who were so sick and tired of their competition, a store called Schmargett, that they decided to blow it up. So why don't you introduce yourself again and tell us your new prompt. Hi, I'm Jen Arthur and I am 11 years old. And my prompt is, there's a guy in a store, but the store isn't normal. There are cart crossings, and there are tractor trailers, and other, like, cars, and carts trying to hit him from all sides. Okay, so basically this writing prompt is like the game Crossy Roads. He's trying to get through the store, and carts are trying to hit him and stuff? Is that about right? Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to take 10 to 20 minutes to write each story. I set the timer for 10 minutes, but uh, at the end of it, if I'm still not finished, I take another 5 to 10, but no more than 20 minutes. And then we'll come back, and I'll read each one, and we'll see how they turned out today. Remember, these are very rough drafts, but the challenge is to do my best to write a very concise yet complete story in such a strict time constraint. Okay, so here I go. Okay, so I'm back. I just took about 20 minutes or so for each story. The first is my middle son Michael's prompt, and he had this idea of a guy in Greece where the street opens up and leading him to the underworld. So this is what I came up with for that. It was an ordinary Saturday afternoon in Athens for Prometheus Stephanopoulos. He was moseying down the street, walking his chihuahua CB, when all of a sudden the ground beneath him began to tremble. Oh no, he said, an earthquake. People began running to take shelter wherever they could, but Prometheus was old and could not run very fast, neither could his Chihuahua Sibi. He watched the middle of the street crack and split open. The cracked line started from about a mile away and traveled at lightning speed until it went right between Prometheus' legs. It kept going for who knows how long after it passed him. The crack grew larger and Prometheus felt his legs growing farther and farther apart. Sibi started to bark. He picked the little dog up. I better choose a side, he said to himself, and so he did his best to jump to one edge of the crack. There was a fiery light coming from far below. Prometheus Stephanopoulos could not hang on to both the edge and to his chihuahua. 
Well, I guess this is it, he said. I'm not letting you go, CB. We'll die together. And so Prometheus and CB fell into the crack. The fall seemed to take forever. Are we ever going to land, he asked his dog. CB just barked. But they finally did land. Prometheus was shocked he wasn't hurt at all. Well, 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 a deep, dark voice that sounded like waves and thunder said. Prometheus looked up. You thought you could run. You thought you could hide. But Daddy always finds you. I'm sorry, Prometheus said. Who are you? You're definitely not my dad. I'm Hades, god of the underworld, you dope. And I wasn't talking to you. Hades grabbed CB, Prometheus's beloved chihuahua, right out of his arms. Hey, that's my dog, Prometheus protested. Actually, he's mine, and he's been very naughty. Hades turned to CB and started baby talking to him. Isn't that right? You've been a naughty little doggy. CB licked Hades' nose. Now turn into your regular form, Hades said. To Prometheus's astonishment, his tiny chihuahua transformed into a gigantic, three-headed, monstrous dog. Run along, Cerberus. You've got work to do. Cerberus first ran up to Prometheus Stephanopoulos, and all three of the dog's enormous heads stooped low to lick him. All three tongues covered his entire body in dog slop. Then Cerberus bounded off out of sight. Hades helped Prometheus to his feet and showed him to the elevator. For your trouble, Hades said, as he handed him a $20 bill. He's always running off. Thanks, Prometheus said. He got on the elevator and rode it back up to the surface of Athens, wondering if he'll ever love a dog as much as he loved CB. The end. <laughs> Did you like it? Yes. That was Michael's uh, prompt. This is Christopher's prompt, which uh, also takes place in Greece, only he wanted uh, the guy to be fighting a Hydra monster. So I used the same character that I used in Michael's story, and we'll see what happens here. Prometheus Stephanopoulos walked into the pet store with the intention of buying another dog to replace his chihuahua CB, which turned out to be Cerberus, the guard dog of the underworld. But when he stepped foot in the pet store, he was immediately captivated by the large reptile section. He saw frogs, snakes, and different kinds of lizards. One particular lizard caught his attention. How much for this one? he asked the owner of the store. Twenty dollars, he replied. Now Prometheus Stephanopoulos was just given twenty dollars from Hades a few moments earlier, so he eagerly handed it over to the pet store owner. What is he, a salamander? Prometheus asked. Not exactly, the store owner said. Here's your tank and sword. Sword, Prometheus asked, as he grabbed the hilt of the large, ancient-looking weapon. What on earth do I need a sword for? The store owner ignored the question and simply said, Call us if you need anything. We're open till five. Prometheus's mind was full of questions, but he kept them to himself and went back to his apartment. What will I name you, little guy? He said to the lizard through the glass tank. I think I'll call you Hercules. That would be cute. Hercules hissed at the mere mention of this name. When he awoke the next morning, Prometheus was shocked to discover Hercules had grown so large he was out of his tank and running around the apartment, going through the kitchen garbage, tearing up the rug and living room curtains. As soon as Hercules saw Prometheus, it crept up to him slowly, treacherously. Easy there, Hercules. Prometheus wasn't sure what to do. Then he saw the sword he was given off to the side. He slowly made his way to it and lifted it. It was so heavy for his old and feeble arm to carry, but he managed to hold it up with both hands. Hercules went to attack. Prometheus swung the sword with all his might and chopped off the head of his new and overgrown lizard. Prometheus knew he had to do it, but felt bad nonetheless. After all, it was so cute and little just a day ago. But then something happened. Two heads appeared in place of the decapitated one. Prometheus gasped. Then he screamed. Then he found strength he didn't know he had. He swung the sword again, chopping both heads off. But within seconds, four heads appeared where there were only two. He repeated the process. Hercules had eight heads, and then sixteen, and then... Okay, this isn't working, Prometheus said to himself. He locked himself in the bathroom and took out his smartphone to Google what kind of lizard this was. It turned out to be the famous mythological Hydra monster that could only be killed by burning the wound immediately after cutting off each head. That will take forever. So instead, Prometheus called the pet shop and said someone had to come and pick up the monster at once. Twenty minutes went by. Hercules, the Hydra, wrecked the entire apartment and tried desperately to get inside the bathroom where Prometheus hid. The doorbell rang. Come in, Prometheus shouted. 
He heard the beast screech and hiss, and then a deep and dark voice like thunder and waves said, You can come out now. Prometheus came out slowly, still grasping the hilt of the sword, standing before him, was Hades. Once again, Hades said, very sorry about all this. He tried to give Prometheus another twenty, but he told Hades to keep it. Prometheus Stephanopoulos never bought another pet again. What do you guys think of that? I like it. You liked it, Christopher? Yep. So I wrote a story that you liked? Yeah. Okay, good. Yay! <laughs> That's him why. All right, John Arthur's prompt was uh, basically a Crossy Road situation uh, in a store. So I took that as inspiration to write uh, something a little different than that. So here it goes. They were husbands. They were fathers. They were next door neighbors. But Bartholomew Johnson and Charles Gordon III were also enemies. Both of their sons wanted the Tokunda Tech Advanced Gaming Console 4,000,000X. But it was the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and every kid in the country wanted it as well, and all the stores were sold out of this high-demand product. Bartholomew and Charles were in their home offices calling store after store. They stared at each other through their windows and snarled as their hateful eyes met. Finally, someone at Schmargett answered, Yes, Bartholomew answered. I want to know if you have the Tokunda Tech Advanced Gaming Console 4,000,000X in stock. Please hold. There's another call on the line. Bartholomew looked out his window and read the lips of his nemesis, Charles Gordon III, ask the very same question. He knew what the answer was when he saw Charles leap for joy and run out of his office. They walked out onto their driveways, as inconspicuous as they could manage. Lovely day, isn't it? Charles said to Bartholomew as he unlocked his car. It really is, Bartholomew said. And then he added, There's only one left, isn't there? That's right, Charles said, and I'm willing to die to get it. Are you? Don't need to be, Bartholomew said, with just the hint of a wicked smile. They drove like race car drivers on private roads, honking at old ladies, hitting garbage cans and mailboxes and parked cars. They both called for backup. Charles Gordon III was an ex-Navy SEAL and had immediate access to a team of retired assassins. Likewise, Bartholomew Johnson's cousin belonged to an elite team of ninjas that stopped at nothing to accomplish their mission. They both pulled up to the front of Schmargett and ran inside, leaving the engines running. They entered at opposite sides of the store. The retired assassins were hiding everywhere, disguised as regular old men, for at this point in their lives, they were indeed regular old men. They communicated with walkie-talkies. He's in aisle nine. I'm on it. Over, came the reply. The assassin in aisle nine pulled out his tranquilizer gun, ready to put Bartholomew to sleep before ever reaching the game console. But before he could pull the trigger, one of Bartholomew's ninjas, hiding from a rafter in the ceiling, blew a dart at the assassin's neck, causing him to collapse asleep. Charles was running through the baby section when a ninja popped out from behind a box of diapers, tripping him. Charles went flying to the ground. The ninja flipped twice towards him to finish him off, but he felt a sting. He looked at the regular old man who was smiling and realized he had just been shot with a tranquilizer gun. The ninja fell to the ground. Charles got up and started running again. He turned a corner. So did Bartholomew on the opposite end of the electronic section of the store. In the middle, at an equal distance from both neighbors, was the prize, the Tokunda Tech Advanced Gaming Console 4,000,000X. They both ran for it. Ninjas and retired assassins came out from every direction. Tranquilizer darts whizzed past them but missed. The two neighbors had to jump over speeding shopping carts, dodge ninja stars and flying nunchucks, until finally the console was just in reach for both of them. But before either of them could grab it, a hunchback woman as old as the hills picked it up and said, Oh, my grandson will just love this. And that was that. Charles Gordon III and Bartholomew <laughs> Johnson looked at one another. Both were bewildered and exhausted. I'm sure they'll get more in stock next week, Charles said. Yeah, you're probably right, Bartholomew agreed. They both went home, empty-handed. About a half an hour later, a taxi pulled up to Charles' house. The hunchback old lady came out and handed the gaming console to Charles. Thanks, Mom, he said. Bartholomew saw all this from the window and immediately called his ninja cousin. The end. I liked it. Man. You liked it? What did you think, John Arthur? That was your prompt. Mm, it was okay. It wasn't really my prompt. That's what I didn't like about it. Right, so... I like it. He had the same problem Christopher had with his prompt uh, last week then.
So that wraps up this episode. And remember, if you yourself have written a story you'd like me to read on the show, or if you have a writing prompt for me to write a 10-minute story, please email it to storykingpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be a part of what we're doing on The Story King, please consider becoming a patron. You can visit my page at www.patreon.com forward slash The Story King. The link will be in the show notes. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a very practical and tangible way to support your favorite content creators so they have the resources they need to continue producing more great content. I have three monthly subscription tiers you could choose from on Patreon, a $5, $10, and $20 option, All include receiving exclusive content, so be sure to check those out. Again, that's at www.patreon.com forward slash The Story King. Please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. The links are also in the show notes. And if you enjoy the show, please subscribe and write a positive review on iTunes for me. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening to The Story King Podcast, where great stories are read, discussed, and given their due honor. Please join us next time. Until then. Until then.